So then we have REM sleep, which is your rapid eye movement sleep. And that's bursts of eye movement, so the flickering eyes under the lids. There's intense brain activity in dreaming, and there's more and more research suggesting that this is when we lay down our memory. And so um, if we've got interruptions in our REM sleep, if we're constantly coming up out of REM sleep and not getting back into it again, um, that's not good for our memory and our, our ability to lay down our, our memories. There's mu muscle twitching and vocalizations can occur in this stage of sleep, but this is not when sleepwalking occurs. Sleepwalking or night terrors occur in deep sleep. Um, they, they don't occur in, um, in REM sleep. This is when we see the behavioral sleep problems. So that's a good way of dis di uh, differentiating between what we call dysomnias, which is the stuff that we see around the behavioral sleep problems, and the parasomnias, which are the deep stage four sleep, which is where we get the night terrors and the sleepwalking. And REM sleep occupies about 25% of kids' sleep time by the time they're five years old. So I've put in a few pictures here just to lighten things up a bit. So this is the baby waving. Um, so infants spend about 50% of their time in REM sleep and about 50% of their time in non-REM sleep. And young infants, very young infants, usually begin their sleep with REM. But as they get a little bit older, they, they begin their sleep with non-REM. So that shifts. Um, in newborns, total sleep time averages about 16 hours a day. Um, but it can range from 11 to 23 hours. So you'll have some mums who say to you, I can never get anything done because my kid never sleeps. Those are the 11 hour a day sleepers. And then there's other mums who'll say to you, I'm bored out of my mind because I figured that I was going to be all tied up with my kid uh, at the beginning of my mat leave and this kid is sleeping almost all day. And those are the 23 hour a day sleepers. So you don't want to have your first kid be, be a 23 hour a day sleeper and your second kid be an 11 hour a day sleeper because generally it's not very pleasant when that happens. It's a big shock, exactly. Now this decreases to an average of about 15 hours by three months, so 15 hours of total sleep time, and by six months it decreases to an average of about 14 hours of total sleep time. You'd be amazed how many families I talk to where their six-month-olds are sleeping more like 10 or 11 hours of total sleep time. There's a lot of sleep-deprived babies out there. Um, and as these children get older, sleep becomes concentrated during the night in what we call the longest sleep period. And this is when they start to consolidate their daytime sleep and their nighttime sleep, and they have longer uninterrupted nighttime sleep. And so it's reasonable by the time um, a child reaches six months of age to expect that you're going to have this longest sleep period that will last about six hours. So by three weeks of age, the longest sleep period is only about 25% of, of total sleep time. Um, and so it's only about 212 minutes, which is around three to four hours. Um, but by six months, it's increased to about uh, six hours. And it gradually shifts into more time as the child um, gets older. But there are six-month-olds who can maintain sleep for um, 10 or 11 hours. So it, there's a, quite a, a range there. There's quite a bit of variation. But they, at minimum, should be at least able to maintain that six hours of longest sleep period without interruption. And usually by the time babies are six months old, they're starting to consolidate their, their daytime sleep into two to three naps a day. And ideally what we're aiming for is two naps a day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And the reason we're aiming for that is because they're developing, they're going through developmental sta stages and changes and they need, as part of their development, to begin to consolidate their sleep. So giving parents advice for six-month-olds that's the same as the advice that you give them for newborns or six-week-olds is not appropriate. And a lot of parents do get that advice when their babies are six months old. Don't worry if their sleep isn't consolidating. Don't worry if they're waking up all the time. That's just part of babyhood. They'll grow out of it blah, 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 and they don't, and it's not, and it's not taking into account their developmental stages. That, by the way, is my grandson, <laughs> having one of his getting ready to go to sleep periods. So for normal sleep in toddlers, um, total sleep averages about 13 hours by two and about 12 hours by three to four years of age. But again, there's large variability in this group. 
and the majority at night have an average sleep time of between 10 and 12 hours. And again, you'd be amazed at how many families I talk to who phone me up about their two-year-olds or one-and-a-half-year-olds, and those kids are getting, on average, maybe 10 hours of sleep a day or nine hours of sleep a day, so they're very, very sleep deprived. Um, the average one to two year old has one to two naps and really ideally naps for infants and one to two year olds should last at least one hour. So when I'm working with families, I try and give them strategies that they can stretch that nap time so these kids are not cat napping for 20 minutes because it's not healthy for them to do these 20 minute cat naps. It's not helping them with their daytime sleep consolidation and it doesn't help them with their nighttime sleep consolidation either. And usually these toddlers eliminate the morning nap first and then they eliminate the afternoon nap later. Now I have to say that when you look at the literature, there's quite a few four to five year olds who still need their afternoon nap. And I am a little worried about this move by the government to have all kids in kindergarten um, for all day because I think that's going to have a significant impact on the sleep of some of these children who are still needing their afternoon naps and are not going to have an opportunity to do that if they're in school all day. So this is another case where decisions are being made that don't necessarily take sleep patterns and, and optimal sleep into consideration. Okay, do infants and toddlers wake at night? Yes, they do. Um, they all have these episodes of semi-wakefulness that occur five to seven times a night. The difference between um, the children that we know about and the children we don't is the children we know about can't get back down to sleep without intervention. They have no self-soothing st strategies or skills at all and they have to rely on their caregiver to get back into sleep when they come up into these periods of semi-wakefulness. And normally these periods of semi-wakefulness would just last for a minute, max five. So the baby might be, okay, so I'm doing this for you, I'm role playing. So the baby's lying there, sleeping away. And then they might open their eyes and sort of look around and go, Ooh. and that might last for about a minute. And then they close their eyes and they sort of go back down into deep sleep again. Um, they often verbalize when they're doing this and they often open their eyes. And I've got a lovely video that I shot of one of my uh, friend's children when I was helping her with her child's sleep problem. And it shows her coming up from deep sleep into this light semi-wakeful state, opening her eyes, looking around, chatting, and then going back down into her deep sleep again. What do we have in rooms that we never used to have before? Monitors. Baby monitors. And what do baby monitors do? They make parents worry and they transmit every single sound that a baby makes to the parents. So in the days when we didn't have baby monitors, if I was in my room and I was sleeping, and my, I was my mom's first kid, so my mom was you know, doing, ironing the sheets, which is what she used to do, or the towels, and um, I woke up, I would have to you know, get myself pretty worked up before my mom would come along and check on me because she, she had no way of hearing me um, unless I you know, yelled out, right? Now we have these baby monitors that everybody's listening to, and I think what happens in a lot of cases is, Kids come up into these stages of semi-wakefulness, they vocalize, parents go, oh, baby's awake, run into the room, pick them up, and they don't get a chance to go back down into their deep sleep state. So this is actually contributing to sleep fragmentation. And it would be better if we just left them alone until we actually heard them giving a clear signal that they were ready to get up before we got those children out of their beds.